back leaners are defined as trees that are essentially leaning opposite to the direction you want them to fall. Out in the forest, you can change a back leaner into a leaner simply by deciding that you're okay with the direction it's leaning. For this reason, most trees that really want to be a back leaner decide to grow near a structure. A small back leaner might fall on a house without doing too much damage. At the other extreme, I remember seeing a very large pine tree that had been growing in the front yard of a suburban Atlanta home. The tree had fallen right through the middle of a beautiful two-story house and gone all the way to the ground in the backyard. Driving by, I could look through along the length of the tree from the front yard into the backyard. Medium to large back leaners should be taken as very serious threats. Additionally, properly taking down a medium to large back leaner requires precise techniques, extensive specialized knowledge, and a variety of expensive equipment. Combining those requirements, homeowners should never attempt to take down a medium to large back leaner unless they can shrug off the consequences of something going wrong. It is one thing if it is a garden fence that is at risk, but an entirely different thing if the tree could cause $50,000 worth of damage to a house or garage. Medium to large back leaners should be left to experienced, well-equipped professionals. This even applies to mild back leaners. This video will cover several of the things that could easily go wrong with inadequate experience or equipment. There are basically three methods of bringing down medium to large back leaners. Two of these consist of dismantling the tree piece by piece and rigging each piece to bring it down in an appropriate location. It takes a lot of equipment to take a tree down piece by piece. That includes these ascenders for left and right hand, a foot ascender, various straps to put around the branches to lower them, a friction saver, a porter wrap, and a leg strapped handsaw, an in tree uh, uh, saw that you can use with a single hand slightly larger saw that you can use uh, as you get into the bigger stuff farther down the trunk, a uh, climbing rope, a uh, cube to store your throwing line in, a couple of weights, a heavy duty uh, pulley, uh, heavy rigging lines, a uh, protective hard hat, climbing spurs, and probably most importantly a good harness. Uh, so there's an awful lot of stuff you need to do a good job of taking down a tree piece by piece. In the other method large bucket trucks or large cranes are used to minimize the need for climbing to provide an alternative means of lifting and lowering the cut limbs or simply because the tree is structurally unsafe to climb. This has become a major concern for ash trees, which are dying due to the emerald ash borer, but still appear to be fairly sturdy. This video only covers the third removal method, which consists of pulling the tree back to vertical and then past vertical to fall in the desired location. The equipment required includes one or two porter wraps, around 200 pounds of heavy chain, a couple of cable winches, at least one large saw, and a heavy rigging line. When non-professionals have unsuccessful results when trying to pull down back leaners, the two most common reasons are an underestimation of the forces required and an overestimation of the forces they are able to exert. Let's put some numbers on a somewhat representative example. We'll assume we have a large, strong guy pulling on a rope fastened to a tree trunk at a point 25 feet above a two-foot-high stump. Our guy 
has his feet solidly planted 50 feet from the center of the stump and is leaning back at a 45 degree angle. He is 6 foot 3 inches tall and weighs 200 pounds. Rather than just holding on to the rope, he has it wrapped around his waist, which puts it 3 foot 6 inches from his feet. Due to his 45 degree lean, the rope extends 2.47 feet horizontally past where his feet are planted. That end of the rope is also 2.47 feet above the ground. Let's assume a somewhat average medium-sized tree with its center of gravity is at a height of 25 feet above the back cut and that it is leaning back by just 2 feet at that height. That lean works out to just over 4.5 degrees. Now let's do a bit of trigonometry to find the angle of the rope, which works out to be 24.24 degrees. With the basic geometry set, let's look at some of the forces, starting with what our guy is capable of. His feet represent a pivot point about which two moments are competing. His weight is trying to pivot him clockwise, while the tension in the rope is applying a counterclockwise moment. His 200 pound weight is acting with a 2.47 foot lever arm, creating a moment of 495 foot pounds. Assuming no one is willing to budge, the tree is pulling back with a tension that balances that moment. The lever arm for the tension in the rope will be the perpendicular distance to the pivot point, or 3.27 feet. Solving, we find that the tension in the rope is only 151 pounds. Note that it doesn't matter how strong our guy is, the tension is primarily a function of his weight and lean angle. So, what does the tree experience from that tension? The tension can be resolved as a vertical force down the trunk, which we can ignore, and as a horizontal component of 137.7 pounds, which will act on a 25-foot tall lever arm to create a moment of 3,442.5 foot-pounds. Up to this point, we haven't considered what moment it will take to pull our tree over. The most obvious resisting moment will be the mass of the tree itself. Assuming our tree weighs one ton and that weight is centered two feet behind the center of the stump, the resisting moment will be 2,000 pounds times two feet or 4,000 foot-pounds, more than what our guy can apply. However, it gets worse. To pull the tree over, we will have to exert a significant additional moment to break the hinge. For our theoretical tree, let's assume the hinge is 11.5 inches wide and 1.5 inches thick. Breaking this hinge will be equivalent to breaking a typical 2 by 12 piece of lumber. Note that many hardwood trees are stronger than the coniferous trees that most structural lumber is made from. Consulting the timber construction manual, we find that the section module S will be 4.219 cubic inches. The typical allowable stress for design are around 1000 psi, pounds per square inch. However, that number has a factor of safety applied to the actual ultimate stress to ensure that the lumber won't become overstressed and fail. We will have to fail the actual strength of the wood, which will usually be somewhere between 3 and 12,000 psi. If our tree is alive, our wood will be wet, so we'll assume the strength on the low side at around 4,000 psi. That works out to an additional 1,400 foot-pounds of bending resistance our guy has to pull against to get the tree to fall his way. That bending moment is equivalent to a weight of 700 pounds at the end of a 2-foot-long cantilevered 2 by 12 plank. Adding that moment brings the horizontal pull required at 25 feet above the stump 
to 216 pounds, much more than the 137.7 pounds our guy is straining to provide. Note that if our puller continues to pull while his buddy finishes cutting through the hinge, he will no longer have to break the hinge, but the tree will still be pulling with 160 pounds of horizontal force more than the puller can resist. Depending on how he has the rope wrapped around his waist, he might go for an interesting trip. The farther our puller stands from the tree, the more effective his pull will be, but the improvement is minor. If we alter our example to have the puller 100 feet from the tree, the force he can exert will increase from 138 to 162 pounds. However, if he is only 25 feet from the tree, his horizontal pull will drop to just 109 pounds. Let's take a quick look at what a pickup truck can pull. We'll consider a Chevy Silverado 1500 with rear wheel drive and a weight of roughly 5,000 pounds, 2,177 of which is on the rear axle. We'll assume the truck is on grass with a coefficient of friction of around 0 0.35. Our rope is attached to the tree at a 30 degree angle. As the truck tries to move forward, it creates tension in the rope. That tension has both a horizontal and a vertical component. The vertical component acts to lift the rear of the truck, reducing the net weight available to act in friction on the grass and move the truck forward. The dominant control on pull is the friction between the tires and the grass, but it is further reduced by the lift in the rope. Running through this simplified analysis, we find that the maximum horizontal pull the tree can be subjected to is 650 pounds. If we also factor in the additional lever arm distance from the rear tires to where the rope acts on the truck, that tension is further reduced to just 607 pounds for this 5,000 pound pickup. If the truck was on concrete or asphalt, the friction would increase to something like 0.7 to 0.8. If we rerun the above example using a friction factor of 0.75, we find that the maximum pull increases to 1,060 pounds. If we have four-wheel drive on asphalt, the maximum horizontal pull in our example increases to 2,617 pounds, with most of the pull coming from the front tires. Note that, in this case, the tension in the rope will be 3,031 pounds, so you really don't want to risk using a rope or chain rated for only one ton. In our first example, we looked at a medium-sized tree with a mild lean. Now let's consider a large tree, 24 inches with a 7.5 degree lean. I recently cut down this 24-inch DBH ash and I weighed each of the pieces and their position up the trunk. It turned out to have a weight of approximately three and a half tons and the center of gravity was 30 feet up the trunk. With our back lean of seven and a half degrees the offset from the center of the stump will be 30 feet times the tangent of seven and a half degrees or four feet. The overturning moment due to the lean will then be 28,000 foot-pounds. Assuming we had a rope attached 20 feet up the tree, we would need a horizontal pull of over 1,400 pounds to pull the tree over in the direction we wanted to. Clearly, four big guys on four ropes are not going to be able to do that. We have just taken a look at the first critical concern with felling back leaners, that is, the magnitude of the forces required. In part two of this module, we will look at the second critical concern, controlling the direction of fall.